This is the Snap-on Coolant Pressure Tester Kit, model number SVT S262C. Let's open it up and take a look at some of the pieces, and then I'll show you guys how you would pressure test a radiator cap, and then we'll go right into how to use the actual coolant pressure tester itself. Opening it up, you can see it's a three-piece kit. Well, really, it's more of a four-piece kit. If you, do, if you do include the domestic fitting that it comes with on the actual tester itself. It's a universal fitting but fits most domestics. Then you have the screw on style that's usually found on GM and Ford. Then you have one here. This is more for like Honda. And then you have a Toyota one. So you got it yourself a few different tester pieces there that you can use to actually perform a pressure test on the cooling system. Pulling out the actual uh, pressure tester itself, it goes up to 30 PSI, though you'll never actually run that amount of PSI on this thing. You'll actually won't go pretty much past 18 PSI on a typical test. So that just gives you a rough idea that it does go up to 30 PSI, it does have that capability, but you're more than likely not going to go above typically 18 PSI given a certain test. All right. Since I don't exactly have a radiator cap in front of me, we're going to use the test fittings in here to actually show you how you would do test a radiator cap. So what you would do is say that this was your, uh, you're uh, going to test the radiator cap on a Honda. You screw it on to your radiator cap tester like so. Then you would take the other end and you would put it over the actual tool itself until it stops, click the lock in place, and then of course you would pump it up until you got up to whatever the actual rating of the cap was, whether it be 16 PSI or 18 PSI. Then basically you let it sit there for about 5 to 10 minutes, and then you come back and take a look at your pressure on the gauge and see if it held. If it didn't hold pressure, you need another cap. Nine times out of ten when these radiator caps fail, it's going to it's gonna tell you like that because you're not going to be able to get it up to pressure. It's just going to fail it. Same exact purpose as when you're going to be getting ready to test the cooling system. That being said, let's go test the coolant system. First things first, if the car was just driven, make sure it cools down long enough before you end up trying to open up the radiator reservoir cap or radiator cap because what happens is it's under pressure it may cause it to boil over and then you'll spill coolant. Uh, if you don't really care about that, just what I do is I keep my hand on top as I'm turning it and then basically just keep pressure applied until you hear that hiss and once it lets out the air, you should be safe enough to remove the cap. Now this cap is rated for 17 PSI so what we would do is we would open up our test kit we get the appropriate adapter on this, in this circumstance it's going to be the thread on one. We would thread it on to our reservoir. You don't need to over tighten this, okay, you just kind of get it down to where it's snug. Then you take your coolant pressure tester, put it in the unlocked position, put it on top of the cap itself until you spin it around until it stops, and then you turn the knob until it pops up. And what it does is it seats the tester to the actual tester adapter and then you just sit there and you pump it up until you get up to 17 psi and what you would do is you'd set it to the side walk away for about 15 20 minutes something like that come back see how much pressure loss you have if you had a dramatic pressure loss you're losing pressure somewhere in the system nine times out of ten if it's a significant leak it's going to leak all over the ground you'll be able to spot it out relatively quickly if it's not a big leak and it's a small leak you may have to do this a couple of times in order to locate that leak. Okay, now when you're getting ready to put the pressure tester away in order to relieve pressure, so say you didn't have any problems, the system's holding pressure, you don't have an issue there, now you need to release 17 PSI. You just simply twist the cap, you'll hear the hiss, and when the hiss is gone, you just simply untwist your tester and put it back in your kit. And that's pretty much it. All right, this is the Vacuum Venturi Cooling System Refill Kit from Matco, part number MCR103A. 
And what it is, is it's a coolant refill kit. You have a fill hose and you have a vacuum hose. You have a pressure gauge that goes again up to 30 psi of vacuum. And then you have the universal adapter, much like the one that's on our tester. Let's go hook it up. Okay, same rule applies as the rule that we used for our coolant pressure tester. Find the adapter that best works for you out of your coolant pressure test kit in order to hook up the Venturi kit, the Venturi bleeder. Now, this is a pretty universal kit. I believe Stant makes it for Snap-on, and I believe Stant or Mastercool make the Venturi bleeder and other pressure test kits. Both kits are universal. Doesn't have to be Matco, doesn't have to be Snap-on. Either one can be from either company. They'll both work with each other. That's the beauty behind this whole entire video test that we're doing today, is to show you guys that you can incorporate a Snap-on kit with a Matco kit. Works just the same. Same exact principle applies. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up our Venturi tool to our actual adapter here. We need to again spin the knob until it's loosened up. Put it onto the adapter itself. Spin it until we hit the lock and, and snug it down. So now it's pulling itself up and it's seated itself on the adapter. You'll want to close both valves. You'll want to take your vacuum hose and put it into an empty antifreeze jug. Then you'll want to take a full antifreeze jug and take your fill tube and place your fill tube inside of it. Now we need to connect it to shop air. I don't have a shop arrow hose out here to hook this up. I'm just showing you guys the basic principles. Hook it up to shop air. Turn the valve on. This will take about two to three minutes roughly for this needle to go from zero to about 25 to 28 PSI of vacuum, total vacuum on the cooling system. You'll notice that the radiator hoses will collapse themselves because it's pulling that vacuum. It's bringing, again, it's just the same exact concept as the power steering adapter kit that we talked about the other day. It's pulling a vacuum on the system. It's getting all the air out. It's pulling the air out through this hose, putting it into an empty container. You're going to get some residual coolant. So that's why you have the empty container. And then once it's been about two to three minutes and you've reached that 28 PSI and the needle stops flicking, You'll close the vacuum off, so you'll cl close the shop air off, and you'll turn the knob for your fill tube and it'll start pulling the fluid back into the cooling system. Once it's completed or it's reached its zero, you close the valve and you check the fluid level. If the fluid level is still not good, then you might need to take the tester off or the bleeder off and then top off the fluid. I recommend doing it a second time. Turn the valve on, make sure all the air is completely out of the system and it's finished burping, the needle's not fluctuating a lot anymore. It'll settle at about 5 to 10 psi of vacuum. Close the vacuum off, again, turn on the fill port and it'll pull in the rest of the fluid. Now the downside to this test kit is that on these reservoirs, what it'll end up doing is overfilling them. So what you'll have to do is once you've completed the bleed, the service bleed, You'll have to remove the tester, remove the adapter, and use some kind of vacuum pump or use your Mighty Vac to pull out the residual, the extra residual coolant until you've gotten down to the sufficient level so that way you know that you're not overfilled. That's pretty much how you hook up the Venturi bleeder and how you can incorporate it with the uh, coolant pressure tester. And it just shows you the kind of universal fittings that they have out there so you don't have to have the same exact kit. Let's go talk about the end. So you guys just got a chance to see how the coolant pressure tester works, how the Venturi bleeder works, what all comes inside of the Venturi kit, what all comes inside of a coolant pressure tester kit, the various types of adapters that they have, and you got a chance to see how it all ties in together. These are very crucial tools for an automotive technician out there because there's a couple of times that you're going to run across cooling systems that just never seem to want to be free of air 
and air gets trapped in there and it starts to overheat and then you have to crack the bleed screws, wait for all the air to go out, close them, shut the car off, crack the bleed screw again. There are other times that you have to put the vehicle at a slight angle so that way the cooling system can flow the coolant through that angle and it's just an absolute nightmare. The Chevy Venture that I worked on is a prime example. We must have had to bleed that thing out for like four days to try to get all the air out of the system. The, not even the Venturi bleeder was able to pull all the vacuum out of it. It was just that much of a pain in the Rumpelstiltskin. But that just goes to show you there's more reasons to own this because on the Chrysler vehicles, I've never had a Chrysler vehicle overheat on me from pulling a vacuum. I have neglected to put the lower radiator hose clamp back on it and when I pulled the vacuum and it showed that it held a vacuum, thought that I was good to go, took it for a test drive, blew the lower radiator hose off. So you have to be very careful when you're using this. It is not a pressure tester. Pressure tester, Venturi bleeder. Pressure tester, vacuum. This is pulling a vacuum so it's sucking the hose around the radiator. It's not creating a pressure. Pressure is what would blow the radiator hose off. That was the problem. I didn't notice the two differences until that actually happened to me, which is why I'm sharing my experience with you on that. So just know that there's a big difference there. You cannot trade one for the other. Both are very, very good and invaluable tools in this industry. You need to have them. There's going to be times that you're going to need a Venturi bleeder. In fact, service information might even tell you that that is the only way that you can actually successfully bleed that cooling system because there might not be a bleed screw. Now how do you get all the air out of the system? The spill-free funnel is great, but it's not like it's back in the day. That spill-free funnel doesn't work like it used to. You can't just sit there and let it idle until it all burps eventually out. It doesn't work like that. You need to pull a vacuum on, on a vehicle. So that's why this tool is very important and very handy. Now this is only one adapter to test the radiator caps. There are other adapters out there, of course. I didn't have all the adapters here. I just had one adapter to show you because the last time I needed one, I needed to test an Asian make uh, radiator cap and it just so happened that Cornwall pulled up and he gave this one to me for free because he couldn't sell it on the shelf and I was like, great. So this is made by AST. Seems to be pretty good to me, but I guess a lot of guys don't like the plastic testers. I like it just fine, works for me. We'll talk briefly about coolant and then we'll wrap it up. So this says that it's from AutoZone and it's supposed to be a universal coolant mixed with any color antifreeze, pre-deluxe, 50-50, extended life, antifreeze and coolant. Guys, I can tell you from a Chrysler dealership technician standpoint, this is not a universal coolant. You cannot mix the coolant with other types of coolant. With Chrysler being the prime example, we have what's called three year, five year, and 10 year. All are different colors, all have different compounds, the alkalinity is different, the glycol level is different, and what happens is, is if you try to mix the coolants together, it causes sludging. And that sludging can take place in the evaporator, in the radiator, throughout the entire cooling passages. It clogs everything up and it's a nightmare to get out. Some cases you have to actually uh, completely remove and replace the evaporator core because you can't get it all out. And same thing with the radiator. Cooling passages, you have to just flush it out and flush it out and flush it out until eventually you get it all out. That sludging is no joke. I've seen it. I've seen it on cars. I've had to help flush it out before. It's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. So please do not buy into the universal coolant. Uh, phenomenon that's from a technical standpoint okay I know there's a lot of DIYers out there that would disagree with me and they would tell me that it says universal um, feel free to use it on whatever you want no now if it was my vehicle I do use the universal coolant but I use it on my Ford uh, my it's a it's a Ford product it's a 2007 Mercury Mariner which takes the gold coolant I would mix this with the gold coolant and I would mix this with the green coolant, but I would not mix this with Dexcool and I certainly wouldn't mix it with any Asian colored uh, coolant, nor would I ever mix it with any Chrysler colored coolant. So there are some certain circumstances that you can use this universal coolant and when it's gold or green, those would be my, my vehicles that I use this on. I would specifically use this type of coolant with the green coolant or the gold coolant. Now at the dealership, 
obviously we would end up getting the coolant that goes for that car. So if it's Motocraft Gold, we put Motocraft Gold in it. If it's you know uh, Asian Blue, we put Asian Blue in. If it's if it's Chrysler 10 year, Chrysler 5 year, or Chrysler 3 year, guess what? It gets Chrysler 3 year, Chrysler 5 year, or Chrysler 10 year. Uh, we don't mix coolants. It's because of what we've seen at the dealership, and we're trying to negate any kind of issues with the cooling system. That's all I got for this video, guys. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it beneficial. I hope you could see some of the benefits with these tools. I hope you learned a little bit about coolant today and radiator pressure testers and caps and how that all works. Thanks as always for watching. Cheers to those of you that have your beers, and we'll see you next time.